Hi, welcome to Budget MTG Decks. All magic fun, all cards under a dollar. I'm David. And I'm Stefan. And today we're going to be evaluating all the red cards in Guilds of Ravnica. Can you evaluate them for limited, like that, or sealed, like your upcoming pre-release, where you get 5 Velagra boosters and 1 seeded booster of your guild of your choosing. Yeah, and we're going to be evaluating these cards according to our three-tiered system. Tier 1, these are our bombs, our unconditional removal, these are the cards that are going to be winning us the games. Tier 2, really good cards, uh, a couple of these forces into that color, otherwise they're auto-includes if we're already in that color. Tier 3 are filler cards, we use those to make sure that we've got a nice smooth mana curve, and the rest of the cards are either too situational or just plain bad, so we're going to put those aside. Let's get started with the common cards. The first of our common cards is Torch Courier. For a single red, it's a 1-1 Goblin with haste, and additionally we can sacrifice this creature to make sure another target creature gains haste until the end of turn. 1-1 one, one for 1 is not enough, even with the haste being able to attack immediately, you may get in one extra point of damage at some point, but then it's just pointless, and giving something haste for one turn, having to sacrifice this thing as well, it's just not worth this card slot itself, so just put this one aside. The next one is Maximize Velocity, our red sorcery top creature cast plus one plus one and gains haste on the end of turn and it has jump start. Like David just said, it doesn't burn the card slot. So just put it aside too. Yeah, and uh, giving the plus one plus one would be nice. Maybe if it was instant speed as well, so you could also use it as a combat trick maybe. But uh, like this is just not going to be, uh, not going to cut it. It's just not enough. Maniacal Rage is up next for one and a red. So for two mana, it's an aura. We're gonna enchant a creature and that creature is gonna get plus two, plus two and won't be able to block anymore from this point onwards. Uh, auras are just gonna make you feel bad. The power and toughness is not even enough to warrant the card slot. And additionally, if you use this card and they remove it, you're just it is in a terrible situation. And it also stops your creature from being able to block. Yeah. I mean, in your red, you want to attack anyways. Yeah, true. But still, <laughs> terrible card. Terrible card. Ornery Goblin. One in a red. It's a 2-1 Goblin Warrior. When Ornery Goblin blocks or becomes blocked by a creature, Ornery Goblin deals one damage to that creature. We've seen a lot of one toughness things, and even when it blocks itself or becomes blocked, it just deals one damage outright, which means it deals with three toughness creatures, and it deals with... Any 1-1, one, one, uh, X-1. Any number of 1-1s one, even. Yeah. Even if it get double blocked by two 1-1s, one, it kills them both and it suffice. Yeah. I think I always want to play this because it is insane. Yeah. The way you have to remember it is that this ability takes place before the combat damage step. So first you block, then it deals damage, and only then are you going to go to first strike damage and only then to regular strike damage. So that means that they could block with five 1-1s one, and it will still just kill them all before they are able to do anything. Please don't block with your 5 one ones at all in Goblin. It would not be pretty. No, super, super nice card, huh? It is awesome. such a yeah. really good card, Love and it. it's so inspicuous also. A 2 mana, 2 1. Yeah, great. Fire Urchin is up next for one in a red. It is a 1 3 elemental with trample, and whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, it's gonna get plus 1, plus 0 until the end of turn. Now, this is still tier 3 because a 1-3 for 2, we're happy with that. That's a fine filler card. The trample is going to be irrelevant because it's only a power 1. And the, the fact that maybe sometimes it will be for one turn, a 2-3 is going to be negligible. Yeah, I think it's really cool with combat tricks still because then you get an extra value out of True. it. True, yeah. And this is why it's a tier 3 on its own, but it just has that extra bit of upside. Correct, yeah. Goblin Locksmith, one in our red, it's a 2-1 Goblin Woke, whenever Goblin Locksmith attacks, creature with Defender can't block this turn. I'm not expecting to see much Defender anyways, and then for this card I want to just put it aside because there are so many better 2-1s with just upside that is relevant. Yeah, if right. you're looking for that 2-1 for 2. Yeah, I would, even, but regardless I would still just play a 2-2 two, two for 2. In, in favor of this one. Exactly. So you just put aside for that two uh, mana slot that is so much better. And uh, speaking before of uh, good combat tricks, Sure Strike is next for one and a red. For two mana, it's an instant that gives target creature plus three, plus ver zero, and first strike until the end of turn. Now, this combat trick, tier three, good filler card. If you don't have your unconditional removal, if you don't have your conditional removal, then you've got your combat tricks as your removal. And this one is just extremely solid. 
Worst case scenario, you're using this on a 2-2, which means that you're going to be able to kill a 5 toughness creature without even losing your 2-2 if you use this properly. Amazing. Yeah, that is worst case scenario? So, that's already insane. Yeah. Fearless Halberdier, 2 and a red. It's a 3-2 human warrior. Good filler. It's fine. Yeah. 3 power, really nice. 2 toughness, pretty decent. Body's fine, right? Uh, Wojcik Bodyguard is up next for 2 and a red. So, for 3 mana, we get a 3-3 human soldier. So, already you're like, whoa, that's pretty insane. A 3-3 for 3. Nice. It's got Mentor as well. Cool. So, when it attacks, it's going to be able to pump either a 0, 1, or 2 power creature. But then we come to the last part and it says uh, this guy can't attack or block alone. Tier 3, still filler. You will probably be able to attack with something and the power and toughness is that big. And the fact that you'll probably be able to turn your 2-2 two -two into a 3-3 three -three attacking with two three threes essentially mm -hmm. very early on in the game is solid. Yes, there are times when it is going to be sitting there and you can't, do, you can't attack or you can't block with it. You're going to feel bad about that. So it doesn't push it any higher, even though the power and toughness is very high for the uh, converted mana cost. Still just a uh, filler card. It is filler card, but you probably have something on the battlefield. I think having two creatures on the battlefield is pretty normal. Realistic, yeah. yeah, true. So I think this will do a lot. Yeah, a lot easier to use than, for example, the battalion mechanic last time, which you needed this creature plus two other creatures to be able to get the effect. And a 3 3 with Mentor is actually really relevant because the toughness is nice, and 3 power means it um, pumps smaller stuff into relevant um, power and toughness. Yeah. Direct current, 1 and 2 red sorcery, direct current deals 2 damage to any target. I already want to play this. But, of course, there's more. And it has jump start, which means you can use it later in the game again. I'm happy with this. I always want to play this. Yeah. Uh, Rubble Belt Boar is up next for three and a red. So for four mana, it is a three, three boar. So um, that's a hill giant, I think it is. So for three I mana, for remember. four mana, four mana, uh, three, three. Which is fine, you know, that's fine, that's on curve, that's fine filler. Additionally, when it enters the battlefield, target creature gets plus two, plus zero to the end of turn. Cool, so you can maybe make your two, two that you have their attack as a four, two. People are like, ah, oh, okay, I'm gonna have to block that. So it's nice, I think it's a very decent filler, but it is nothing to write home about. It's still pretty nice. And the next one is Graphic, graphic Punch. Three and a red, it's a sorcery, target creature control, deals damage equal to its power to target player which means it's kind of like a burn spell and you need to have a decent creature with it which means you most likely will not have um, much of the times and has jumpstart but if the first ability is not really something you want to use jumpstart is still pretty irrelevant yeah she so just put it aside yeah it doesn't impact the board you know it doesn't change anything a Cosmotronic Wave. This name is terrible. Cosmotronic Wave. All right. Anyway, for three, a red. For four mana, it's a sorcery. This card deals one... I'm not even going to say the name. This <laughs> this card deals one damage to each creature your opponent's control, and creatures your opponent's control can't block this turn. Now, regardless of how terrible the name is, the doing one point of damage to each creature is not even the part what I'm excited about. I'm excited about the second part. Creatures your opponent's control can't block this turn. Red has had this effect before with either, uh, I think it's flyers can't block or, or normal creatures can't block or something along the lines, but it's always normal been creatures. very... creatures. Walkies, <laughs> doesn't say walkies, but non-flyers can't block. But uh, in this scenario, all the creatures your opponents can't, uh, won't be able to block. And later on in the game for only four mana, I think this is gonna be absolutely insane. Because you're going to be, you know, these games go long. You're going to be in a, a, a stalled board state at some point. You got a bunch of creatures. They got a bunch of creatures. They can't attack efficiently. You know, you've only got like five more damage to do to win the game. And all of a sudden you play this, bam, and you go, okay, swinging with everything. And you absolutely obliterate them. There's nothing they can do about it. And additionally, of course, yes, there are times, for example, with black, the color we just saw before, or maybe white with some of the tokens. So there are a bunch of creatures that could have one uh, toughness. And then you could use this card as well to, to kill those. And finally, the way that you could use it is if you can attack and people block and think, ah, oh, you know, my creatures all survive. And you, then you play this in your second main phase. You know, I'm doing another one point of damage to other creatures. Now they all die very versatile yeah it does a lot of things and like you said it helps you to a board star and instantly kills creatures which for me already is good enough to say it's a tier 2 card i always want to play this this will do work 
Barging Sergeant is the next one. It's four and a red. It's a four two, which I really don't like. It's a Minotaur Soldier with haste. Okay, fine. It's not really better, but and it has mental, which actually makes it a little bit better, but still not enough because with the four power, it means it will most likely pump up anything but that's the only thing it does it trades with a 2-2 and gives you thing a plus one plus one counter for five mana i don't that's think not, that's enough it's no. not really what we want to do no if it would be a card let's say that would say uh deal two damage target creature and put a plus one plus one counter on another creature you control for five mana would you think that would be good enough yeah because then i can kill flyers True, that would even be better. Yeah, that yeah. would be so much better. That would be even better. So this is even <laughs> even much worse than already a bad example I was already trying to give. All right, put that card aside. Command the Storm is the last of the commons for four and a red. So for five mana, it's an instant and it's going to deal five damage to target creature. This is conditional removal because it doesn't hit absolutely everything, but it's almost as close. This is tier two, but high tier two as good a removal as red is gonna get i think it's absolutely fantastic and instant speed because that's what we get for like having those really good removal pieces it's a lot of sorcery speed things and i really value my instant speed removal yeah this is absolutely amazing tier two always played in red always gonna play this always all right let's have a look at the uncommons our first uncommon is goblin banneret it's one red it's a one one goblin soldier with mentor and you think why does it have mentor wait they thought about this for one and a red golden banner red gets plus two plus zero until end of turn and then suddenly the mentor makes sense and makes this really interesting because i already like my mana sinks and for two mana extra two um, damage i'm actually okay with this having this one one on the battlefield Plus with the mentor you can pump it up twice which makes it a 5-1 and then it can pump anything. It can pump your 4-4 four, four to a 5-5. Five, five. Yeah. This one drop. That's that is pretty sweet. Such, it's so cool. But still it's one toughness. You have to put a lot of mana in there. So for me it's not an auto include but it's a really really good tier 3. I think it's a bit on the edge. Yeah. Uh, the way what I also like about it is that it has one more utility and that is if you're if you're uh, kind of lagging behind and somebody's going to attack you with a really big creature you can do this on the defensive as well to use it to kill to trade with their really big toughness creature. I think that's nice. Nice that that's an option. And that's also really important because you think with the mentor you want to focus on attacking but this bit can also be used on the defense and that's really nice. Yeah. Electrostatic field for one in a red is a creature. It's a wall. It's a zero four. It's a defender. And whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, this thing deals one damage to each opponent. No, <laughs> you got the the one power is just bad. The fact they can't even attack. The, the fact that zero it's, power. Sorry, the zero power is terrible. The fact that it can't even attack. The fact that. Uh, how many instant sorceries you're going to be playing is you can basically count it on your hands and so it's going to be doing so incredibly little put it aside don't even think about it yeah. next one's goblin crate maker crater maker one on a red it's a 2-2 two -two. already decent enough goblin warrior and for one sacrifice goblin crater maker choose one goblin crater maker deals 2 damage to target creature or destroy target colorless non-land permanent ok the second ability um Second mode, not relevant at all. A 2-2 two, two for 2, and it can deal 2 damage to any creature. I really like this one, and I think I'm always going to play this. Yeah, super strong. Yeah, it's already a good filler, and then it deals damage. Sign me Just up. Just auto-included in red. Always feel good about it. Lava Coil is up next for 1 in a red. It's a sorcery. It's going to deal 4 damage to our creature. If that creature would die this turn. We're going to exile it instead. Might be relevant some, for some graveyard strategies, but still, for just two mana, being able to kill anything pretty much, I mean, most of this stuff is going to be four toughness or less. It is tier two, just auto included. It is actually a lot of damage. Uh, yeah, we already liked our five mana for damage, and then we got a two mana for damage. I mean, it, okay, it's not instant speed, but I'm fine with just this. Just play this. Yeah. yeah. Oh, amazing. Amazing. Tier two Smelt Ward Minotaur. 2 and a red, it's a 2 3, which is decent. And whenever you cast instant assault spell, target creature opponent controls can't block this turn. Not really the relevant, but like we said before, the, the body is good and it's an upside, which means it will be relevant. Yeah. Tier 3. 
yeah, it's just uh, really strong. I think the early game, uh, I like how it can uh, it can kill all the two twos. And late game with the instant sorcery, it still does something, you know. Mm -hmm. Street Riot is the next card for four and a red. So for five mana, it's an enchantment. As long as it's your turn, creature you control get plus one, plus zero, and have trample. So it's only on the offense, not on the defense. Sure gives your entire uh, board uh, evasion and a power boost. So I do like that about it. However, uh, and it also is an enchantment at converted mana cost of five, which usually when we say it comes in, it's got to do something. And this enchantment actually does do something when it comes in. So you'd say, okay, we could include it. However, you do need to make sure you got at least a couple of creatures. And there could be a situation where you just don't have enough creatures. Let's say if you only have two, then uh, just adding the additional two and giving two creatures uh, power and toughness, uh, sorry, uh, uh, trample, it's just not enough for the five mana and the card. So I would say, Put it aside unless you're going, you know, wide, if you got some way of going wide. But then you're probably in Silesnia anyway. Yeah, well, I think it's really important to think about if um, if you see game one, that opponent doesn't really have that ma much removal and stuff like that, and you get into board stalls real easily, then you can always just bring this one in because that means you break these board stalls so easily. And I think this is important because, like we said, we this is more of a um, situational card. And when you always get in these board stalls, then you maybe think about yourself, maybe I should play this card. And I think it's also important about thinking what is your opponent playing. And that's why I don't want to put it into my main deck. Yeah, I do see a scenario where maybe you're playing uh, uh, Selesnya and Boros at the same time. So green, white, and red. You yeah. got some wide, you got some aggressive creatures. I can see this card having a home in that kind of uh, a sealed yeah, deck. So it could shot, work, yeah. yeah. I mean, then, then your whole strategy is just going white, which changes the whole thing, which yeah. also makes this card a side card because it's situational. Yeah, very situational. But I think also it's really important to talk about when these cards are... Um, pretty good and f I like it because all the cards you open is in your sideboard which means you can still change your deck in game two and game three yeah next card hellkite whelp for four and a red so that is for five mana a three three dragon with flying so that's already really nice uh, evasion and uh, that power and toughness is pretty sweet especially because we've seen a lot of uh, uh, two power and toughness uh, flying stuff and when this guy attacks, it deals one damage to target creature defending player controls. Another thing we did see is we did see some black flyers which do have enough power to be able to deal with this. The problem is they won't be able to because as soon as this one attacks, it's going to deal one damage to them and it's going to blow them out. So this and it thing can't even block. So this thing eats up those black flyers with the one toughness. And additionally, any other of the white flyers, it can just eat those up as well. So this is absolutely insane tier two. And it can eat the ground creatures. You forget the ground it creatures. It eats the ground creatures. It oh, eats everything. This is so good. It's a little whelp. It has to feed. It's just flying, going like... Pachoo, pachoo, pachoo. That's great. You have to make that so sound when you attack as well. You got to go... Because otherwise it doesn't work. It's triggered. Not, not May. Anyways, the next card is Book Devourer. Five and a red. Five and a red. It's a four five beast with trample. And whenever Book Devourer deals combat damage to a player, you may discard all the cards in your hand and if you do draw that many cards which means you can go to your deck real fast on this already decent body of a creature it means you get your bo um, your other bombs and your removal so tier two i always want to play this and it has trample yeah it's, it's just it's just great it great. does everything i want yeah all right really uh, we saw already five toughnesses and uh, nothing to sniff at mm -hmm. in this set and the last of the uncommons, Inescapable Blaze for four and two red. It's an instant, it can't be countered, and it deals six damage to any target. Okay, this is tier one. This is unconditional removal because nothing has more than six toughness. So this is this is red's unconditional removal. And additionally, on top of that, it's instant speed. And then finally, what makes it so good is it gives you that reach end of the game. You're both at five life, you know, the, the board is stalled, and then you just play this, you go, bam, you're dead. And it can be countered. So it will happen anyways. It is absolutely amazing. Really, really great card. Let's uh, have a look at the rares now. The first of our rares is a Runaway Steamkin. For one in a red, it's a 1-1 elemental. And it says that whenever you cast a red spell, 
if this card has fewer than three counters on it, we're going to put a plus one plus one counter on it. And then we can also remove three plus one plus one counters from it to add three mana to our mana pool. Now, the chance of being able to get three plus one plus one counters on this because you're playing so many instant sorceries are just negligible. And for two mana... And I, it all has to be white, red. And it also has to be red. Well, it, it, does, it can also count um, on creature. Oh, also creature. I thought it was instant sorceries, yes. Still, you're going to be playing two or three colors at least. I don't think you're going to be getting enough of these plus one plus one counters. And even if you do, making it, turning it into a one one again, just to give you that little bit of extra mana, I think that's just not good enough. So I would put this card aside. It's really nice to have it only be a red spell, so it can also uh, trigger on creatures. But still, I don't think it's good enough because you have to have it early game to do something. In late game, you play two mana for one one, that doesn't do anything. Yeah. Uh, and as well, we have to remember that once it hits three counters, then it won't grow past that. So it'll never be more than a 4-4. Four, 4-4 four, yeah. four, four would be okay, but yeah. it was never just going to get into uh, exactly. huge territory. 4-4 four, four will be okay, but you need to still have to do a lot of things Jump to get a it a 4-4. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Next one's Risk Factor. Two and a red. Instant target opponent may have Risk Factor. Deal four damage to them. If the player doesn't, you draw three cards. We don't like these cards because we don't trust our opponent. We don't trust they give us the things that we want. And that's why we need to have the ch um, the ch no. choice the choice to pick what we want. And if we give it to the opponent, for some reason they always give us the thing that we don't want. Yeah. And it's really such a shame. Yeah. So that's why I don't want to play this because when we wanted three cards, they were like, oh, yeah, just take four damage. And when we need that damage, they were like, okay, you know what? I'll you give you three cards, but you don't really do anything with it because I'm going to kill you now. Yeah. It has jump start, which means you can use it again. But does that make it better? I don't think so. No, I don't think so either. Next up, Legion War Boss for two and a red. So for three mana, it is a 2-2 two -two Goblin Soldier with Mentor. And additionally, at the beginning of combat on your turn, we're going to create a 1-1 one -one Red Goblin Creature Token. That token gains haste until the end of turn and attacks this combat if able. So the cool thing about this is that um, we are creating a 1-1 one -one every single turn. And should we be able to attack with Legion War Boss without being afraid of losing it, then we're essentially attacking with two 2-2s. Two and if that survived, the next turn we could do that again. So people need to answer this or they need to have a decent way to block this and not with a defender because then you can still just attack or, or zero toughness uh, power creature because you're going to keep on using. So they need to have something that can kill this thing. So this thing gets out of control really fast if they don't answer it or have a decent way to block it. So that's tier two. Yeah, if they don't um, constantly kill your one ones, your army keeps on growing and growing and growing. And it's just so insane. Yeah. Experimental Frenzy. Three and a red enchantment, four mana. You may look at the top card of your library anytime, which is pretty cool. And you may play the top card of your library. That is maybe even a lot better. This makes it interesting. But if you get good cards, sometimes we get a downside. And it is you can't play cards from your hand, which means you can look at the top card of your library like, I can't play this right now, which means you can't play this at all anymore but luckily for four mana you destroy experimental frenzy and i don't think that's good enough because you get that incremental um looking at your deck and then building your hands and then end of the turn you uh, end of the game you can four mana destroy it then you have a whole hand but if you can't really do anything i don't think it's good enough no. because for four mana you don't do anything and then afterwards for four mana you still don't do anything you have to hope that you're able to get some value from the from being able to look and play the top card of your library but if yeah. you can't then you've seriously got a problem because you now you still have a hand on top of that exactly if you have two lands on top then you play the first one and then you still have the second one which you can't play and then you can't do anything yeah you would require something like pay three mana uh survey one or something you know so you can like at least get rid of the stuff you don't need that's what we had in dominaria you had to and then can still exile the top card of your yeah. level, which makes those things playable because then you can also manipulate the top card. Yeah. And then we go to the last of the rares, and that is Erratic Cyclops for three and a red. So for four mana, it's a zero eight Cyclops with Trample. And whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, it's going to get plus X plus zero until the end of turn, where X is that spell's converted mana cost. 
Once again, zero eights don't help us very much. And the fact that only a few times in the game is going to be able to attack with any kind of power whatsoever. And for the rest of the game, it's going to be sitting there doing nothing. It's just going to make you feel bad. So please just put this aside. Yeah, just put it aside. And those were the rares. Yeah. Yeah. Let's have a look at the mythic. Our rare mythic is Arclight Phoenix. It's three and a red. It's a 3-2 three, three, Phoenix with flying and haste, which already on its own is pretty good. And since it's the Phoenix, it has at the beginning of your combat on your turn, if you cast three or more instant sorcery spells this turn, you may return Arclight Phoenix from the graveyard to the battlefield. But we will never be able to do that. Still a 3-2 flying haste for four. You're always going to play this. Yeah. So tier two. Yeah, so if you're already in red, since it's tier two, if you're already in red, yeah, throw it in there. Yeah. You know? But if you if you pull this, and this is your mythic, that this does not mean that you're playing red. <laughs> it is so disappointing yeah. if this is your mythic. And you're not gonna be, in, and we always say, yeah, and multiples of these you know, push you into that color, but you're not gonna have two or three of these things because it's a mythic, so it's not gonna happen. So it's essentially only if you're already in red, yeah, throw it in there, but don't it, be too excited it, it, it about it. It would feel so bad if you if you got three of these mythics, like any other how mythic you, would be you, better. You six packs, how are you gonna get three of these mythic? That's insane. It's a chance, so you always have that chance. That's true, that's true. Unlikely. All right, that is it for the mythic. Let's have a look at the conclusion. In conclusion, I like red, but only in a very specific scenario. I find the commons and uncommons are very strong, but also only really the very low converted mana cost commons and uncommons. As, as we saw already before, I think a strategy with using red together with white uh, or using it together with uh, green will will give you, I think, the the aggressiveness that you that you want to have in these kind of sealed decks. But I don't think you're going to be able to go for a slow grindy uh, deck with red because of the quality of the cards later on in the curve and also in later in the, the rarity scale. I like my red because it has some really good removal. Also, this um, six mana do six damage to any target. Amazing, Normally, yeah. we only do it to player or to creature. Now we can choose, and that makes it so much better. What I really think is interesting of red in this set is that all the commons and all commons are really good, or most of them are really good, and all the rares and, and the mythic not really that exciting. So terrible, yeah. which actually makes it a good color because yeah. of the the power of the commons and uncommons, yeah. and that's what that translates in a limited pool. Yeah, but you just don't have those bombs. You don't have that thing that you drop it on the battlefield and you think, okay, this is gonna win me the game. All you have is. This is solid, solid, solid. These guys are coming in early. Let's swing in with them. You know, kind of what Boros wants to do, and if you can, you can uh, support that as well a little bit with, uh, with I think with green for a little bit of the bigger creatures. I think that that could work. Yeah, but, but that makes a, a solid support color. Absolutely, yeah, definitely. Also, if you like these videos, you want to help us make more, head on over to patreon.com slash budgetmtgdex and consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month. We'd also like to thank all our current patrons for making these videos happen. Thank you very much for that. Also, join us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, that's where we post pictures, uh, let you guys know what we think about other cards and uh, new decks coming out, deck techs, top five lists, the whole shebang. And of course, more importantly, that's the place where you can get in contact with us ask us questions and talk to us. So uh, join us there. Also subscribe to us here on YouTube for the most powerful decks and advice everyone can afford. And if you do, don't forget the little bell button so you get notified when a new video comes out. And these videos are coming out pretty fast one after other. So make sure you hit the little bell button. That's it. Thanks for watching. I'm David. I'm Stefan. And this is Budget MTG Decks.